Hi, this is Stuart Weems and welcome to the Investopoly podcast. My goal is to give you insights, strategies and tips to help you master the game of building wealth. And in this episode, I'd like to talk about how the emergence of working from home or the increased popularity of working from home uh, will impact on property investing and asset selection. Uh, it's a, an article that I just wrote for the Australian newspaper uh, that appeared on the 19th of May and I thought I would riff about it a little bit in my uh, podcast. Uh, so obviously as a result of the coronavirus shutdown, uh, more and more people have been forced to work from home uh, and uh, very large companies have been forced to kind of mobilise their workforce and um, over a very short period of time send people home and, and make the necessary arrangements so that business can continue. Uh, and obviously there's been some teething issues uh, in relation to that. Uh, we at ProSolution have had to do the same same thing, obviously to a much smaller, on a much smaller scale, but still have to deal with the sort of similar teething issues. But we're all sort of adjusted to a new normal, if you like, um, and we've been able to resolve most of the operational issues. And in the main, uh, most people are enjoying the flexibility that working from home provides. So the um, concern then is, uh, well, once we all start working from home, then our proximity to the CBD, if that's where we're working or wherever our employer is, um, uh, the, our proximity towards uh, from our employer won't have as big an impact on our de- or maybe no impact on our decision uh, where to to live, and as such, maybe people will be or more people will be attracted to more regional centres uh, on account that potentially a lower sta- uh, cost of living and also uh, housing, obviously particularly uh, cheaper as well. Now, obviously, working from home doesn't suit all. Uh, businesses, industries, or employees or roles. Um, uh, But then again, it suits other roles a lot better as well. Um, And there are some benefits, obviously, working from home, Um, say, fewer um, distractions, so more uh, high level of productivity. You know, you you get interrupted a whole lot less when you're working from home versus working in the office. And obviously, you eliminate the travel time, um, which can... Uh, but go both ways in terms of uh, giving yourself more family time, but also uh, more time to um, to do more work as well. So the time that you'd otherwise be sitting on the train or in the car, uh, you can get started on your email, for example. And it's interesting to note that Twitter uh, was probably the first global business that uh, announced that they'll allow their staff to work from home permanently. Uh, and certainly uh, senior public service leaders in both Canberra and around Australia states and territories are also talking about how they can accommodate that. So I think it's a pretty strong theme uh, that's going throughout the economy. Um, Of course, it's not all positives. You know, I can see some really big downsides to working from home. You lose that sort of face-to-face connection with co-workers. Um, And, uh, you know, that's a really big... Uh, benefit that we enjoy from working in a group and a team is the sort of camaraderie and the relationships and the personalization of it all. Uh, be able to you know, go in the office and sort of whinge about what's happened to your happened to you yesterday at home or whatever uh, is a sort of cathartic uh, um, uh, process. And um, if we're just left alone in a room at home by ourselves all day, uh, that's going to really weigh on uh, employment satisfaction. So, look, I, I think we've got to sort of balance out this whole ideal that, you know, that we're all going to work from home and nothing's ever going to change again um, uh, because I don't think it's going to suit uh, everyone for an extended period of time. In any case, uh, if it does occur... Um, what impact will it have on asset selection, property investing and the supply and demand principles. And that's really what I wanted to talk about or sort of uncover. Uh, I think the first thing that we need to think about is that we uh, there's many factors that go into uh, informing our choice of location uh, of where we want to live. Proximity to work uh, or your employer might be only one of those things. 
Uh, one that really jumps to mind, particularly for a lot of our clients, is proximity towards uh, proximity from schools, uh, so uh, education facilities for children, uh, whether that's private schools, certain private school locations, or if they want to end up in a in a quality uh, school zone uh, for for a public school. Um, the location of where you're going to educate your children tends to be a pretty compelling and significant consideration when deciding where to live. Now, obviously, there's going to be good um, public schools in both uh, capital city locations and also regional centres. So I'm not saying that uh, good schooling is exclusive to uh, capital cities. But again, it's one of those considerations of many to take into account. Uh, And uh, you've just got greater selection, I think, in a capital city location um, you know, in a in a closer distance from each other, where there might only be one or two opportunities or options in a regional centre, um, and that can play into people's uh, decision making. Uh, also, proximity to family. Uh, there can be two things associated with family. If people have older parents that uh, that are in ill health or need some sort of caring or attention. Uh, that living in close proximity to them uh, makes the travel time a lot easier and to be able to to deal with those issues uh, and makes them feel more comfortable as well. Uh, Also for families with younger children, uh, often uh, parents provide pro bono babysitting services, (laughs) which obviously can be very um, uh, important, uh, and living closer to parents so they're able to provide that sort of support while you've got young kids and young family is also important. Uh, naturally, there's other considerations that can, and these other considerations uh, can mean that a regional centre is more attractive than a capital city or vice versa. But things like health services such as hospitals, other amenities such as entertaining, entertainment, I should say, shops and restaurants and so forth, are all important considerations. Uh, For example, if someone's a surfer and maybe they like to live down by the beach, then a regional uh, location might suit them better. Uh, Whereas if you, what you enjoy is going out and seeing a show or um, going having dinner with your spouse or friends, uh, then obviously a capital city is going to provide more options in relation to that. But also if your friends are in a particular location, um, and you move out of that location, you've either got to create a new network or that decision's not really going to uh, suit you very well. Um, the point is that uh, certainly working from home uh, alleviates the geographical consideration with respect to where we live, but also there's arguably just as important or sometimes more important factors. And don't forget, in most houses, households, you've got two spouses that work. So um, unless uh, both employers uh, provide that, uh, both spouses, the opportunity to work from home permanently, then I think we can overstate the impact of, um, of this whole working from home movement can have on the property market as a whole. Of course, there's going to be patches uh, and it will have some impact. Uh, the question is whether that impact is material or not uh, is a completely another factor or completely another question, I should say. So when investing in property, we need to understand, and I keep banging on the fact about the fact that asset selection is absolutely paramount. And one of the things with asset selection is that you must invest in an area with diversified level of demand, where demand always materially outstrips the supply of assets in that area. So the way I like to explain it to my clients is I say notionally what you want to do is buy an asset that notionally has 20 potential purchases for that asset um, uh, for every potential uh, property for sale in an area. And so that, uh, and those 20 purchases should come from different sort of socioeconomic segments. You know, some might be investors, uh, first home buyers, upgraders, sort of empty nesters, retirees, uh, wealthy individuals. They could be running their own business. They could be employees. Um, they might have had inherited funds. The, the fact is you want those 20 people really to be from very, very diversified locations. Now, five of them might be uh, kind of not as financially strong as the rest, 
uh, and maybe five of them will be have significant financial resources and always be able to pay more and more for particular properties in particular locations, but they're all going to be look a little bit different. So therefore, again, notionally, if something changes, whether it's a tax rule or whether it's um, working from home becomes uh, trendy for a period of time, that um, and that has an impact on demand, a negative impact on demand, then perhaps, again, just notionally, perhaps your pool of potential buyers drops from not 20, but maybe 17. You know, three people decide to um, have a complete life change and they're no longer wanting to live in a capital city location. So now you've only got 17 buyers. But as long as you've got more than two or three buyers for every one asset, you're typically going to get price or experience price growth over a long period of time because as long as you've got competing buyers for a limited pool of assets, you know, the the, the um, prize, the purchase, always goes to the person that's willing to pay more. And that's what's ultimately going to generate uh, sustained capital growth. Um, so the best way to kind of mitigate some of these things or, or some of these risks, and working from home is only one of them. I mean, there's... Um, some talk about, you know, for example, what about self-driving cars? What impact will that have? Because, you know, that potentially um, reduces travel time as well. So uh, there's lots of different risks, some of which we can identify today and some of which haven't yet materialised. There's lots of risks, but the best way to kind of deal with or mitigate uh, some of those risks is to level up on quality. And, um, and that's really about buying a scarce asset and again as an analogy instead of saying what we want to do is buy a diamond uh, what we really want to do is buy the pink diamond you know something that's even rarer than a diamond uh, and that will weather most storms and most uh, temporary or permanent changes in demand Uh, at the end of the day that's what's going to create long-term returns it's not necessarily a case that it's going to beat every single location But what it does do is it gives you the highest returns for the lowest risk. It has the greatest probability of generating quality returns. Whereas you might, um, to some degree, look at a map and go, okay, well, if work from home becomes really popular, I think this um, regional uh, location will benefit the most. And then you could uh, make a really big financial bet and go and buy a property in that location. And it could if you end up being right over the next 10 years, actually generate better growth or higher growth than what a, a, an investment grade blue chip location will. Um, but that ignores the risk because it could also, and there's a reasonable probability, it could also underperform for lots of different other reasons as well. And so investing is all about achieving the highest return for lowest risk. And we've got to think about all the risks that can occur. So the working from home is one of them, but there's lots of others, as I've suggested. Um, and not only just uh, demographic things and, and changes in the nature of how we behave and act, but also there's macroeconomic factors as well. So there's lots of risks out there. And so what we need to do is think as investors, how do we invest in a way that reduces as many of those risks as possible? almost betting on a sure thing, something that's guaranteed to drive growth over the next 10, 20 or 30 years. And if we take that very long time horizon, it might seem very boring and not very sexy and um, and it's and it's probably not going to necessarily give us a 20% return in one year like a regional centre could, but it will. what it will do is have the highest probability of working. And at the end of the day, that's what's going to make you feel good about your your investing is the fact that you're actually going to achieve your goals um, and uh, it's going to perform after a while you'll quickly forget about all the um, uh, overnight uh, successes that you've missed out along the way so there you go that's working from home i don't think it's going to have any substantial impact on demand for property in prime blue chip locations uh, particularly for well selected assets Uh, It's one of those things that's going to change over time. And I think also uh, perhaps uh, people are kind of overestimating um, uh, the longevity of and the extent of people working from home. Uh, So that's it for me this week. Until next week, bye for now.